you know, it's like, what, 13 days until Christmas, and we still haven't received gifts from you guys, the viewers. I'm or still U.S. Waiting. soccer, because I kind of feel like uh, they owe me something. Yeah. They owe all of us something. They do. They should, Well, we get free ground shipping, I think, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> According to every email. On, ever. on a brand new jersey that no one wants because it was supposed to be for the World Cup. Yeah, it, you know what's sad though? Those jerseys look nice. I, I like yeah. that blue one a lot. I would get yeah. that if it weren't a tarnished jersey. So maybe Did I'll get it. Ever come it with a zero on, on it? Maybe I'll get it when it goes on deep discount. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's that's not good. This is US Fan TV. Uh, we talk about soccer as it relates to the United States of America. I am Pat. He is Chris. That I am. I am Chris. Uh, here's what we have. We have lots of there's there's like stuff, you know. Yeah. We, there's lots of stuff. I don't even. It's almost know like gonna, November didn't happen. I don't even know if we're going to get to it all, but uh, the president's race, um, the everybody's got to have their their three required nominations tonight is the deadline. Uh, Hope, fucking solo entered the race since we've last spoke to you. The um, first, the first, and as far as we know, only possible u.s uh, soccer presidential candidate with self shot nudie pics on the internet i mean to be fair she's the only one i'd want to see i don't need to see sue neal <laughs> or anything um but yeah uh the thing about hope um i i Springs really eternal let's do hope right now because i i feel like we need to i really tried to put aside my feelings for her <laughs> um and really because like you know she wrote a, a nice thing it had a glaring typo at the beginning that was fixed but the the word cup she had something to say on the word cup but um but otherwise i mean i liked a lot of the things that she said in her platform but then i go is she going to be the one to reinstate herself if she wins um, see is she I, going to yeah. pass the request background check uh does she have the mental state stability to to make big decisions at the same time do you know how pissed she would be if she saw that performance as as ussf president that we put yeah. out in trinidad like she would probably go in the locker room and start kicking dudes asses so somebody's getting punched in the face part of me wants that and i know what that is i know you know I know what happens with, with that. And I know it's just a dumpster fire that continues to burn until the whole house burns down. But a small part of me wants that. Most of me doesn't want any part of that though. But I, I tried to go into it with an open mind. I like, you know, she, she's, she's all for getting more kids involved and, and getting rid of, of, of the high cost of travel soccer, which I think is fantastic. I don't know how you argue with that unless you own a travel soccer team. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I just, I, and then, you know, she, her spokesperson tells Grant Wall that she's got the three required nominations and then there's reports that she really doesn't. And, and who knows, because it's all being done in secret. Sunil waits five days after announcing he's not running to basically finalize it so that his uh, people can vote for somebody else if they want to. Probably, there was probably some benefit to Kathy Carter there. I don't know what it would be, but um, but it seems like she's, you know, Kathy Carter is definitely the uh, MLS and Garber are backing her. She's obviously the establishment candidate. And if you thought Eric Winaldo was the anti establishment candidate, it's now probably hope unless it's this Paul appoint guy who hates the media. So <coughs> yeah, uh, man, uh, his Twitter feed is entertaining. Some of the stuff I agree with, but uh, when you can yeah, understand I, if you can understand what he's writing. Yeah. Some of it is <laughs> a little bit out there. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of saw Winalda as like, on the one hand, it's it's a balance of like crazy and possibly awesome. Hope is more, or maybe Winalda's a mixture of possibly awesome and crazy, and hope is crazy and possibly awesome. Uh, there's a little bit of, uh, what the hell could happen? But then again, maybe we've also had that with our country, and maybe we don't need that with US. I soccer. was thinking the same thing, yeah. <clears throat> um, like, I, I don't need yeah. this, and this is obviously less important than our country, but at the same time, I, I don't need more crazy. 
I just need a little more than what we're getting now. Yeah. So it's really, yeah. I want a little oh, we, more. We need a change to the status quo. I don't know that we need to just blow everything in the entire world up and go like, oh, let's see what happens. Yeah. Throw it all to the wind. Uh, I, I do wonder, though, uh, will she then have a U.S. soccer van to drive around? Permanently, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's no big deal if she has it. Yeah. Uh, it, but, I, yeah, there, there are so many things here. Like, between uh, the pictures that were re- were released, uh, I went there rather than make the joke about... I mean, those pictures uh, were hacked, as I remember I, it. I know, so I know. And I, I only went there before because... I thought it was too obvious to go with the the only candidate who has a, a DV accusation and charges against her, uh, which that case actually I found out still isn't closed. That is still out there. So she still has a domestic violence charge somewhere against her. Uh, it just hasn't, it still hasn't reached the court. So it still hasn't resolved. But um, yeah, there's so many nuts things here. The things she said, the fact that let's face it, if more of the team was really behind her and um, maybe that, and uh, had she not done enough things to kind of upset the uh, USSF apple cart, she wouldn't have been kicked off the team anyway. So there are an awful lot of things here. I question who she's getting to nominate her. And on top of it, who's going to vote for her? Because while we can all laugh about it, at least I could see where Winalda might have the votes, you know, like, like he's sort of the, you never know. Like he has good ideas, but he's also a little bit on edge where he also could be a little crazy. She's like, she might have some good ideas, but they also might just be what she's saying to cover up the fact that she's crazy. And I can't tell which one is the comic relief here. Yeah. You know what else I don't like? It's the, uh, there, there are people who want a woman to be in charge of the Federation, which I think is fine. I just don't want either of the woman, the women that I have available to me. I, I know that, like I said, I know Kathy Carter is qualified for the job. Oh, sure. And I know that, it, like uh, Leander was saying today on Twitter, um, Cher Lekens, is that how you say his last name? It's a very long Dutch name. Uh, yeah. But I like him as a writer. He, he was pointing out that for the people who want no relationship between USSF and MLS, there needs to be some relationship between yeah. USSF and MLS, but you don't want it so lockstep that, that, you know, it gets in the way of, of progress. So um, I feel well, like that. Some is purely the, the business arm of all that. I mean, they're the, they're the ones manipulating everything to, to, to grab a buck. They're, a, they're, they're, they're Chuck Blazer in business form. Yeah, I, I, wonder, I, I wonder about U.S. soccer's books and how some might be used to manipulate things in a way that, that helps U.S. soccer maintain its 501c3 status, but, but uh, you know, still squirrel away tons Quietly, of money. And we know, yeah. we know they have tons. Of, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm throwing out things that I don't know to be true, but I have questions about things because they're not very transparent. So um, hopefully whatever happens going forward, they're, they're going to be a lot more transparent. I, I hope we'll know tomorrow who's left in this race and we can actually, cause like some of these people, Paul Caligiri, I don't know what he wants to do or if he, I, I haven't studied his, his, candidacy and and um steve gans we've known about since he was the only guy who was really in it before we failed to qualify for the world cup um so i've looked at him a little bit and and um you know kyle martino has been kind of quiet it seems since he although he he does admit he has the official uh uh, uh votes or the nomination sure he excuse does. me to yeah he, yeah he noted on twitter i think last night that um that he's officially a qualified candidate now. If you're looking for a happy medium, and I say this without having done tons of research on all of these guys, but Kyle's the guy we know. Kyle might be the happy medium between somebody who's going to shake things up somewhat but not be crazy. Yeah, I um, mean, my take is he is a good, um, he's a good face for U.S. soccer. I definitely mean, he has, that, yes. He has the relationship there, uh, not only as a player, but also now as an announcer. 
um, <clears throat> you know, he has uh, the the kind of requisite, say, gameplay uh, uh, resume that you want. Plus, he has the commitment and seemingly honest commitment to wanting open clarity across the board. You know, he wants the books open. He wants the votes out in the open. He wants everyone to be able to see what's going on. He wants transparency. And I don't think he's lying about it. I don't think he's just saying this to, to get votes. I think he's being genuine in, in, his, uh, in his desire to get this. To me, he is probably my favorite candidate because I think not, not only um, does he have kind of the, the stuff we want, because realistically, they've all said something along, along those lines. You know, they want more transparency. They want more equality. They want more fairness. They want more focus on uh, building a youth program. He's kind of that and maybe has a realistic chance of getting it because too many right. of the other people, I don't think have a realistic chance. I think the real, realistic chances come down to him and uh, Kathy Carter. And maybe that's about it. And maybe, maybe, Winalda. Um, maybe Winalda. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, to me, I'm guessing most of the player votes are going with one person and when all this is a bit like Hope Solo in that, like, you love him or you hate him. Yeah. I wonder or about this Cordero case, guy, love too. Her or hate her. Who, we, thought, <laughs> there, we thought the Sunil candidate was going to be him until yeah. Kathy got in the race. So That's probably a good... I, I, I was going to say, I couldn't think of his name at the time, but I was Are they say, splitting votes, or is... Yeah, I doubt it. I, I think... They, I just have a feeling her relationship with Sun means she just got... She just got the votes. Um... Yeah, so we'll see. Um, we should know hopefully tomorrow who who makes it, but I mean, I don't know when it's going to be announced. I assume people like Grant Wall will be tweeting about it once we we know who uh, who actually publicly got the votes they needed, and then we can go forward and, and see what we want to do from there. But it's not like we have a say. I mean, like as Alex pointed out, there's there's a if you are a U.S. soccer member, which I tried to be, I had a question. <laughs> for us soccer and i emailed them and they never responded which is really great i'm trying to give you my money and and they never responded to my basic question it wasn't even that difficult of a question but i'm not giving them money if they can't respond to an email um i tried to be <coughs> it's unclear as to how that's even supposed to work the whole thing is very poorly run and i think I that's mean, because it's, they didn't it's expect so to have to run anything they That's just probably expected, part of it. They've never, they just always hand it over to the next guy. I think some of it is, it's a bit like how FIFA runs things. I mean, yeah. uh, somebody just said the, the fans should have a vote. Uh, oh, they, oh, it was Leipzig. They do have a tiny. Leipzig. Never mind. I, what, what I was going to say was the problem with that is they don't have the, the, the you know, processes in place to make sure that everyone's truly voting and voting once. Right. And, you right. know, they, they, they don't have they all that. Do they barely. They barely have a staff in place for like anything. Right. They um, couldn't even answer a question. Yeah. <clears throat> about their membership um, scheme. So, you know, just try to get tickets from them for an important game. <laughs> like any, any uh, qualifying game. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to have tickets out to you on Sunday. Wednesday. It's like, as, uh, as we've no pointed out many times, the moms of American outlaws do a much better job getting tickets out <laughs> yeah. to us than us soccer does when they have to handle it themselves. Yeah. Um, it's, so yeah, there's, I think they don't have the, um, the people, the processes, the equipment, whatever in place to truly handle this. So to, to give to open up, uh, election to just an unknown number of people, I think would, is, is unrealistic. Uh, even if, yeah, it might be nice to have a vote, have a say in this. Um, but whatever. So I assume it's all going to be chosen in house. I think Kathy Carter is probably the inside candidate, and I guessing I shouldn't say inside candidate, inside track candidate. And I think she will probably be uh, your next, our next USSF president. Let's talk about Michael Bradley. Indeed. So uh, he lifts the <coughs> uh, trophy, the MLS Cup, on Saturday. And I think after what is admittedly an absolutely st 
stellar classic Michael Bradley performance. Oh yeah, at defensive he, midfield, and you he know ran that game. Josie scores, and uh, Toronto, you know, best team all season. They call themselves the best team ever. Um, I guess rightfully so wins MLS Cup. In any other year, I would have been ecstatic for Michael Bradley, and I th- and I tweeted on Saturday after like it, it took me an hour or two to to think about to kind of form my opinion on this because part of me still felt cheated seeing him lift that trophy. Part of me wondered, you know, did he give that level of effort in, in Trinidad? And I couldn't tell, but I mean, to the eye test, we've talked about the eye test before, yeah. where the effort was a lot more visible in this MLS yeah. cup game than it has been for Michael Bradley for a while um, in a, in a U.S. men's national team game. This doesn't say it wasn't there. Which it, there could be a number of factors that that uh, that are causing it to look like Michael Bradley's playing poorly, but I mean the fact of the matter is he does sometimes <laughs> in a national team jersey, and I I, get, I came to the conclusion that I still like Michael Bradley and Josie Altador, and I'm happy for them. I am happy for them that they they won this, but um, and it's not my. We talked about this before too. In my ideal world, Michael Bradley is still playing in Europe. But maybe that's not what's best for him, for his wife, for his children, his life, his financial uh, success. Um, he went to Toronto because they had a vision and, and he got a ton of money and that vision paid off and he won and he still got you know a, a big salary and he played great. But I guess I'm, ha- I'm happy for him. But part of me goes, where the hell was that? Why couldn't this, is you know, why couldn't we have that? Yeah, I mean, look, I don't think that just because we didn't qualify for the World Cup, it eliminates the history he's built. It will forever tarnish his legacy. Sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't begrudge him for, for winning this. I did tweet during the game, I think it was after Josie scored, that uh, Josie should be happy now, but I think I speak on behalf of, U.S. soccer fans say, we are not so happy. (laughs) Um, Look, they did their job. They did what they were supposed to. They were the players you expect them to be. I guess the problem really is that, yeah, there should have been a higher level of competition in that game than they were facing against TNT, and they didn't look nearly as good. Now, there were other factors at play, um, both in terms of the other players that were around them, as well as you know, the, the style in which they were playing. So there are some things that perhaps uh, were better set up to their, uh, their abilities. But you would like to have seen more of, I don't know, 2010 era Michael Bradley, which is kind of what this game and, and frankly, the uh, MLS Cup last year looked like. You know, the playoffs uh, this year for Bradley – he looked like the Bradley of old. He was engaged. He was he was kind of on the front foot about everything. You know, he was he was fired up. Uh, he's a smarter player than he was in like 2008 or 2009 when he was a liability at times late in games. But he's still that hard charging. I'm going to kick somebody's ass to get this ball, as opposed to I'm not sure what what his role has been for the last few years, kind of on the national team, where it's like. He's the the backbone and perhaps the the uh, the safety valve for the team, but he's not necessarily the driving force of it. You know, he doesn't show that that same kind of fire. He doesn't show that same drive. He doesn't show that same desire to just win. Um, and I, I I don't I don't know what what to put that on. Um, you know, I I was reading something. <clears throat> they were talking about um, what this meant, what what the uh, you know, MLS Cup and this season for Toronto meant towards his legacy. And they commented on, there's something perhaps about U.S. soccer fans that we both love and hate our best players. And it's true. If you think about it, Donovan back in the day, like – Everyone knew he was the best player, but everyone gave him shit. You know, like, we tore that guy down all the time. We sort of did the same thing about Bradley for years. And I'm not saying he's the best player anymore. He's certainly not. But for a number of years in there, I absolutely believe he was. Yeah, I think what that is is 
there's an idea of when we do it's especially true with with Donovan until the Algeria goal and yeah. now with Bradley and and Josie these are the three that I, I see it with there's an idea that we have of what these guys are supposed to be and none of those three guys met what we as as u.s soccer fans envisioned for them that's why we love christian Pulisic so much yeah because he's exceeding what we thought he would do at a very high level and we'll talk about uh, that coaching change today and, and and today's match in a second here but uh, involving him but it's and that's kind of stupid because if we shouldn't judge michael bradley or josie altador or or old Landon Donovan against the idea that we have for what they're supposed to be. It should just be who they are and, and what they've accomplished and, and what kind of person they are. And, you know, I, I think they've done fine for themselves. Now, would I rather see Michael Bradley lifting a champions league trophy or, or something or, you know, playing in the 2018 world cup. Yeah. But it's, it's just not the way it worked out. So, um, and I, I think that's why there's so much hatred, love and hatred toward those three guys. And f- and for whatever reason, it seemed after the Algeria goal, it seemed to go away for Landon in large part. Well, I think part of it was Donovan just had such an incredible 2010. Like he was awesome in MLS. He went over uh, to uh, to Bayern and played well there. Uh, or uh, was that when? Was that when he went to Everton? I think that was when that was, he was, yeah, with, was with, Everton. with Everton. And, and Myers was like, 08, you know, I believe. And was uh, EPL player of the year for uh, you know, January. But I, can't, I can't remember what month. February now? Uh, I can't remember what month it was. <clears throat> where he was, he was just awesome. And then he came back to MLS, was awesome again. Went to the World Cup, was awesome. Um, you know, it was everything he touched. He, he kind of was finally the player we always hoped he could be and that we always wanted him to be. Um, I think Bradley had that in 2010 as well. I think he just was overshadowed because uh, Donovan had such a big year. And then I think 2014 was probably his shot, but Josie got injured. Klinsman didn't really have a backup plan. And I think everything was placed on his shoulders in a formation that didn't work for him and possibly also, uh, you know, he was also returning from that foot surgery, and maybe that just wasn't it. And then, yeah, I think he's been a victim of uh, his own hype from there. Yeah. It, so, I mean, there. I mean, it, I'm not going to hate the guys, but I'm not going to, like you said, it doesn't take away everything they've done, but it does. There's it does kind of tarnish it a little bit. Yeah. There's a definite. There's a big check, a huge check in the negative column. Um, so good for them. Um, I I hope they're happy. But I also hope. Hey, that part of Josie's them, been partying since Saturday. Yeah, that was pretty funny. J- Josie does seem like a dude who'd be a blast to hang out with. Yeah, I gotta say, Michael Bradley. Nice enough guy, but seems like he'd be a lot more serious and reserved. Yeah, maybe, maybe like that's always, just his public persona. Bradley's but always uh, like set to train again or something. Josie, yeah. like, Josie's clearly enjoying his time. Uh, <coughs> Dortmund today, they won a game. They finally did. And for anybody who thought that um, the managerial change would hurt Christian Pulisic, he started. So I believe he was subbed off, right? But um, I believe that's right. I was and now. Half paying uh, correct on that, but um, yeah, Peter Stoger. They traded Peters at Dortmund. Peter Stoger, uh, Stoger, one of those, um, is the new manager, and um, hopefully it means more of the same for for Christian. Although I will say, since that Bayern game, I don't think we've he played well in that game. He, uh, I don't know that we've had he's played that well since and. We're getting to the point with Pulisic where, um, and everybody get ready because I'm about to maybe criticize him a little bit here. If you're going to play that far up on the on the field, you have to produce a goal or an assist now and then, and he hasn't in a long time. And he's still, you know, he, 
takes it has a lot of dribbling. He's been involved passing. in some of them. He's but, been involved. Yeah. He's he's had some nice crosses that were not finished by Obama Yang or whoever. But, um, but we're getting to the point where he needs to start uh, punching some some assists and some goals into his stats and and helping his team get him back on track there because you can only you know your your dribbling take ons and that sort of thing are are great but you know. Dortmund needs goals to win. So, and if if you're playing, they're listing him as a forward half of the time. Um, he needs to do that. So, I, I have no doubt that he will. Um, uh, <coughs> I'm kind of curious because uh, now the rumor is that uh, again that Aubameyang may leave in January. So he's always I know I know rumored to leave. <laughs> we've we've been sure he's going to go for two years now, and he still has managed not to. So I don't know what to to make of it. Because um, there's word that they may be in for um, uh, Olivier Giroud if uh, if Aubameyang leaves. I have trouble believing that Giroud is the guy to replace Aubameyang, but whatever, that's another story, and maybe not for our show. But um, yeah, I, if if Aubameyang should leave, you still have Royce if he's healthy, uh, but you have to think that pushes even more of the um, offensive weight onto Pulisic's shoulders. Giroud is the greatest <clears throat> substitute, one of the best going in, in, in football and soccer. And uh, when you start him, he, he gives you... Well, the big, the big problem is he's a goal a, scorer. Sorry. He's not a, a playmaker. And I think in today's game, you have to be so fast to play out there with so many of these guys. And he's just not. Although, if, if you watch him, because I've, I've watched though. this, I've watched this, uh, he's actually pretty fast when he jogs. When he sprints, he takes tiny steps. And I think that's part of it. When he jogs, he takes like six foot man steps. I love when you I have theories like this. I think he's faster when he jogs than he is when he sprints. When he sprints, he goes like, doo, 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 doo. and I think he takes like 40 steps at about 10 feet. And I think it makes him slower than he really is. So you're saying he needs to increase his stride. This is actually, this is, I, I've watched this and I've tried to like, I've tried to figure it out because I watch him jog and it's like, he's running like a normal person. And then I watch him sprint and it's like, wait a minute. I, I don't know. I mean, <coughs> Cristiano Ronaldo also takes tiny, tiny steps, but that dude's fast as hell, even at whatever he is now, 32, 31? I don't know, whatever. <coughs> um, but anyway. Uh, uh, oh, Darlington Nagby to Atlanta? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of a crazy move. Yeah, well, he wanted, he wanted uh, Portland to double his salary, uh, they weren't going to do that, but it didn't sound like he was going anywhere until um, Caleb Porter left. And now, I guess he could be off. The big question is, where does he play if he goes to Atlanta? Like, he I was could push him into out. the middle, know. and he's not lasted in the middle. So, I don't know. Yeah. What else did you have? You have other things on your list. I don't. Uh, we got Giazzi. We haven't talked about Giazzi possibly moving to Columbus. Or, excuse me, Austin. Um, Sorry, Christian. Yeah. Uh, God, that seems like such a shady deal. It seems like such a done deal at this point. Yeah. Yeah. That they. Maybe they want him sad. because his, they figure his hair's weird and they want to keep Austin weird. So they got to. There you go. That's why uh, the Austin crew or whatever they're going to call him. Um, oh, while, while we were in Germany, we probably should have noted that Jonathan Klinsman, yeah. young Hale Klinsman, uh, is. Um, Actually, you know, not only got his first start for uh, first game for uh, the full side at uh, Hertha, made a penalty save, had four saves, actually preserved a draw for them. So that was kind of big. Um, that was cool to see. Um, uh, other not so good news while we're talking goalkeepers uh, and somewhat related, I guess, uh, to our uh, discussion of Arsenal a minute ago, Club Bruges may be in for David Ospina, which means that Ethan Horvath goes farther down the list because he's already struggling to get the number one job. If they bring in David Ospina, you have to think that that probably means uh, Horvath either needs to find a new team or is battling for the number two position. We don't like that. Yeah, that's... I don't see Horvath beating out David Ospina. So um, I, I don't understand why 
David Ospina is still even at Arsenal to begin with. I think he's at number one somewhere for sure. Yeah, so. I've, I've wondered that. Well, quite frankly, I mean, if we're going to talk that, I think Petr Cech needs to retire or needs to be moved on. Um, not, not that I think he's bad at this point. I just think that what are you getting out of him at this point in his career? He's got maybe a, a year or two left at the top level, and I'd rather have somebody younger and faster out there. And I think Ospina could be number one. I but again, off topic, whatever. Um, Tyler Adams is being looked at uh, by AS Roma. And I, I saw somebody talk about Valencia. It looks like, uh, well, Valencia's already been checking him out. Uh, now AS Roma's waiting into it. Uh, Roma is owned by an American, so maybe that helps things, although it didn't help keep Bradley there. Uh, but he's considered uh, a long-term replacement, or one of the guys they're considering is a long-term replacement for Daniel De Rossi. He... Uh, 2006 World Cup uh, infamy, as far as uh, U.S. fans are considered or uh, concerned. Um, and Matthew Doyle of uh, MLSsoccer.com says several big, quote unquote, big uh, Euro clubs are after Jonathan Gonzalez, which could certainly be a good move for uh, for U.S. fans when you're in Mexico and Mexico's trying to persuade you to come play for them. I think you'd yeah. rather see him in Europe and a little bit farther away from Mexico for the time being. At this point, he's probably good enough to make the Mexico team for the 2018 world cup, isn't he? So Possibly. If, if he's going to play there, yeah, we're going to have a pretty big indication here very soon. It, it's, oh, I, I think, I think if he doesn't, commit to them by the world cup and he's going we're in the clear. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, Hey, everything he said sounds like he considers himself a product of the U S uh, um, team. But uh, you know, at the same time, we've got another Gonzalez who, who a month beforehand was saying he felt that he should play for Mexico and was then filing paperwork to play for us. So if I'm in um, that position, where I have two teams after me, I am using all the leverage I can yeah. and all the shit talk I can to benefit myself. So yeah. the thing to say is always to the front runner, you know, uh, unless you're ready to make the decision and unless it's a, you know, it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> you, you can use that to put pressure on people. So if it, maybe he's saying he feels American because he wants to put pressure on Mexico to lock him up for the 2018 World Cup, or maybe he's saying he's American because that's just what he wants to do. It's one or the other. Um, but it, it isn't clearly just that he wants to play for us. It, it may be that it's the complete opposite, that he wants to put pressure on Osorio to, to bring him in. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, Robert, we'll get to uh, Danny Williams in just a minute. We've just been saving that one. Um, Christian, do you think Polisic is capable of winning a Champions League title in the future? Uh, not by himself. I mean, uh, yeah, he's not capable <laughs> of, of qualifying for the World uh, Cup by I mean, himself. He but... certainly, he certainly wanted uh, or perhaps coveted by uh, some top teams that I think put him uh, in a position to potentially win one. Now, look, is he going to be you know the next Messi or Ronaldo? No, I don't. I don't believe anyone is suggesting that. Uh, I don't believe that that he's up there. So he's not going to do it. Yeah, like Pat said, on his own. Um, but is he good enough to get to one of those teams? He's certainly looking like it right now. And you know, Bayern is never that far out of it. Uh, there are a number of other teams in Europe that aren't that far out of it. Um, and hey, uh, come on, uh, Atletico uh, is always maybe like one good season away from either winning the uh, La Liga or winning a, a, um, a Champions League title. And when they're not, they're kind of a crap team. So maybe not crap, but, you know, they're kind of in that mix of sort of everyone else in, in La Liga. Um, I think he'd probably get a look by a better team than that. So, yeah, I, I think he certainly has the opportunity to do it. Will he? I don't know. Who knows? He's our best chance right now. He's our best chance, and he's. If, I, I, I do think that. I mean, it's a, his call whether he wants to stay at Dortmund, but he'll definitely have the opportunity. I think in the next year, I think over this summer, 
it would probably be even bigger opportunity if he had played in the world cup, but he'll have the opportunity to go to a really big team, whether that's the right move and whether what team it is, whether it's Bayern or, 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 you know, Real Madrid or something like that, who knows? And, and whether it's, it's a move that is, is going to be, end up going being good for him. We, we don't know. You remember Chicharito at, at Real Madrid. Some, sometimes these teams are so big that, that players can land there and just suck where they can, you know, a, one step down at a place like Dortmund, he starts all the time. And and it's easy to, to fall out of favor at a really, at, at a world top level club. So um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I, I, I'm very comfortable with him at, at Dortmund. And I, I think I'd like to see him stay there at least through next season. So, um, but we'll see. Um, Alex says Pulisic wants to go to Real Madrid. That's probably the one team that I wouldn't want to see him I go know, to. I want to see him go there, but I mean, if you succeed at Real Madrid, that's it. That's as that's yeah. as, in club soccer. That's as big as you can go. So, I mean, on one hand, I think the risk is high if he goes there, especially if Ronaldo's still there. But um, on the other hand, I mean, that's it. That's the that's the pinnacle. But I don't know that I. I mean, I got to say, like James Rodriguez, pretty awesome. Christian Bale, Christian Bale. Gareth Bale. Christian um, Bale. <laughs> Gareth, Christian Bale's awesome. <clears throat> what do you think you're doing? Um, Gareth Bale. Uh, Gareth Bale's kind of ridiculously incredible. <laughs> and and that dude's like just failing at, at Real, you know? Like he can barely get a game. Uh, Mesut Ozil. Are you still laughing that I said? <laughs> thought of Batman playing for Real Madrid. <laughs> I just you you know I like any excuse to do the bat the Christian Bale Batman <laughs> voice is one of my favorite things so <laughs> it's a battle of guys who talk like this listen Ronaldo <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we talk about Danny Williams Bruce uh, yeah yeah we should Bruce favored MLS players yeah. for marketing reasons. On the one hand, yeah, okay, so so anybody who doesn't know, uh, um, Danny Williams has come out to say that uh, he was, it was suggested to him or he was kind of told that maybe U.S. soccer was looking to market MLS and so showcase MLS players in World Cup qualifying. Um, Bruce has come out and said that that's ridiculous. He just took the best players. Uh, Danny Williams also said that Bruce talked to him and said, uh, you're doing well, but I don't really get to see you. He took it as, how the hell do you not get to see me? I'm in like a top league and have been for years. You should, this should be your job. Um, you know, we, I, I know you've made the case that uh, maybe it is I a matter of. to be true. Yeah. Yeah. Who's it, on TV? Yeah, exactly. You know, who's easiest for you to see? And you're in the championship. It's not so easy to see you. Um, and maybe the, maybe like that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I best players king leipzig as in quotes best players um uh i have trouble believing that even if u.s soccer was truly trying to highlight mls that it would tell a player that um that this would be the first time we'd heard of it if that had happened and that u.s soccer would be willing to do that even at the risk of say, not qualifying for the World Cup. Now, granted, nobody actually believed we weren't going to qualify up until, like, I don't know, 10 minutes before the whistle blew against TNT. So I guess I could see where they didn't think it would happen, but it, it seems awfully implausible to me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we are. We've talked about... Uh, Michael Bradley and whether we still like him, whether we're happy for him. Uh, same goes with Josie Altador. We've talked about Dortmund, uh, the Peter Stoger, Stoger, which one is it? I still don't know. Uh, manager and uh, his, his era. You know what? He's not, he's not as imposing of a figure as Peter Bosch. And I, you know, you know, I, I'm partial to bald guys, but he doesn't have that going for him. Um, but they won, so that's good, and, and Pulisic started. Uh, we talked about Nagby to Atlanta. We've talked about the insane race for the Federation presidency. 
which we're going to know more about. Hopefully when we wake up in the morning, we're going to have an idea of, of who's left and who will be facing off. I hope some of these candidates, I don't want a nine person race. I hope some of these candidates drop out and I hope that one of them is hope um, because that would be nuts, but I, I can't do entertaining crazy anymore. I, I don't have enough mental energy to handle crazy entertaining. I want stable and smart. <coughs> so I can't do uh Yeah. Tuchel was better, possibly a ball denier, but clearly the best manager for Dortmund, but he's not obviously not coming back unless it's going to be next season or whatever. That seemed like it was way too far gone though. And you know, who knows? Um, Jameson, what uh, what Division One or Division Two school? Because I could have thoughts on uh, either one, but uh, I don't know. I, I tried to ask, but I didn't see your comment go through again. So um, I'll ask now: uh, What Division One and what Division Two school are you considering, or schools, whatever? Um, uh, yeah, definitely Tuchel would be was the better choice. Um, I don't know if by the way things went down that they'd bring him back, but then again, it's, it's, <laughs> it's world football. Um, <laughs> well played zero anonymity. <laughs> uh, Roger. Uh, yes. I do think the fire still have a chance at winning the world cup. I do. You know, not to, be, told me. not to, I'm not like trying to find silver linings here, but, I told you I watched that that Netflix doc, Akaris, on uh, the uh, Russian yeah. doping stuff, which is absolutely, if you have not seen that thing, guy sets out to make it like a cycling <laughs> documentary where, um, you know, he's trying to basically do what Lance Armstrong did and see how it improves his performance. Gets hooked up with a Russian doctor who's going to help him. And that guy was basically the kingpin of all Russian doping and comes clean and, and they, has to, they have to hide him in the U.S. It's an amazing documentary. With all that's going on in Russia, be it in sport and in politics, maybe it's better we're not there. And I'm not saying I, I want us to not be in the World Cup, but maybe I don't want our national team to be in Russia. So I'd still probably rather they be there, but I guess the silver lining is they're, they don't have to put up with that type of shit. So I know when um, my wife's coworkers went to Sochi for the Olympics, they had to get burner laptops and burner phones and a bunch of stuff. And they just left it all in Russia because they assumed that everything would be eventually bugged. And if you brought it back to the U S this is what their, their security team did. They, they had to leave it all there, waste it all because they assumed Matt Lauer be was trying to hide it in some girl's pants. Yes. That's what happened. It wasn't actually. A... <laughs> oh shit. Now Mario Batali's given girls purple mushrooms i mean it's just, <laughs> it's it, i can definitively say that i'm not going down in this whole scandal so. <laughs> we're not important enough though um yeah all right are we done have we hit it it's eight we've, we've i think so <laughs> uh it's us fan tv we have a website usfantv.com which i forgot to update last night or last week i apologize for that i just realized that today uh but i will update it tomorrow hopefully probably um we have twitter and facebook and instagram and we don't like snapchat and you know about the craigslist secret and we have youtube but you know that because you're currently watching this right now on youtube subscribe please if you haven't and uh tell your friends to do the same we do the shows tuesdays and thursdays but usually it's been because it's december and it's slow we're taking one of those two days off we'll see about this thursday we'll see what's going on um and make the call then uh yeah that's what we do that's how we roll chris do you have any final words no you guys are done leipzig wants to be an intern with us family <laughs> i don't know what that would entail because we're really not anything to begin with <laughs> what does it mean uh when when uh oh oh i i guess uh well i was gonna say um one other thing but what does it mean to be an intern when it's not like we get paid <laughs> i know we just kind of show up and <coughs> it's not like we have like an office or like, you know, it's, it's <laughs> this is barely a real thing. Maybe if we had actually qualified for the world cup, this would have been like a, a real, real thing. Like back when we were getting yeah. 
20,000 views in a show right around the time we didn't qualify. That was, those were good times, but, um, but I don't, I don't know what there would be for you to do Leipzig, but if we ever get big enough that we would require an intern, you're at least fifth on the list. All right. Uh, we'll see you maybe Thursday, maybe not. We'll find out Thursday. Uh, you're done. See everybody. Thanks.